Hi, welcome back. Uh, in this particular tutorial, we are going to see how to apply the render settings in the options dialog box. We have looked at this before, but I just thought, you know, I would create a tutorial so that you could go back and look at it over and over again because uh, part of this is to do with remembering the settings, the best settings that you want. So it's quite a heavy duty dialog box as you see here and we need to open expand this and change certain parameters actually Vire has done an excellent job now it has given you all the defaults which you can find even under this you could select all of these defaults and you could hit render and it will give you the best results actually so you have exteriors you have the interiors and many other things but let's just assume you know uh, things are not going the way you want and there are a lot of weird effects and you know botchiness and stuff like that dark spots or you know brighter spots and you don't know what's really going wrong so that is when if you know some of these i'm not saying you need to know all of this but if you know the important settings and under each one of this i think that's good enough for you to go so we can take this one one by one let's go to global switches and see what what is done under this basically in this section you need to make sure displacement which applies to the material textures and stuff is on here reflection ref refraction is on in, in case if you have glass material you want the right kind of reflections to happen um, basically this is set to very high we would reduce it to as small as 20 because this is basically the quality of reflections and the further it increases it increases your render time so you should knock it down preferably to 20 or something then you have the lights if, if you have sun or any other lights in the scene and you want that to affect your render lights should be on shadows should be on glossy effects if you have metal applied somewhere and it's glossy in nature it's not quite reflective and if that has to be seen in the renders then this needs to be put on progress window so as you are rendering you'll get to see the progress and stuff coming to systems you don't really need to change anything here uh, everything is perfect so actually I would say the first tab that you really want to go to is global elimination which is indirect elimination now this controls almost 60% uh, of your render settings in order for you to get really good renders so if you come under this again you don't have to change anything else except for you need to first put it on very important for it to kind of be effective you'll get some settings here don't worry about this don't change any of this what you really need to change are really primary bounces and secondary bounces so we'll have a detailed section later to really explain you what are primary bounces and secondary bounces for the purpose of this exercise you would just um, select irradiance map as the primary bounce and light cache as the secondary bounce so in short I would like to tell you that uh, light bounces n number of times so ir primary bounce would be the direct light which in this case in, in an exterior rendering it would be sun and stuff in, in case of interior it would be the lamps that you have so the direct light that you get from the lamps and then secondary bounces are basically um, the the number of bounces the light will bounce around you know hitting the surfaces back and forth and stuff like that so and then there are settings under this once you if it is something else you need to change these are the best settings generally you go for your add-ins maybe in the primary bounce and light cache in the secondary bounce and then there are some settings under this you just close this so generally these are the best settings if these are anything else you need to change them to minus four and minus two or minus three even uh, this spherical subdivisions you need to dial it up to 85 and interpolation samples just keep it to 40 or something don't need to change any of these and uh, that's about it in irradiance map you go to light cache and the light cache you need to if, if it's a just a test render you really want to see how things are seen and stuff and it's not a final render then you could knock this down to as small as 500 or even less so what are subdivisions really are um, the quality the quality of a render improves when in increase the subdivisions when in this case if it's 500 then it means uh, light will bounce 
um, almost you know 500 into 500 times the square of this so which is I guess 25 lakhs or something one second I guess 25,000 or something so anyway you get the point so you need to you don't have to change anything else except for this one and this one is good to go this closes so when, once you put this one on then uh, you just can just just take a test render and see what happens well, everything is very dark here that's because we had changed our settings earlier and uh, we had not saved them so okay let's just begin with a black canvas and let's uh, tweak things around and you know get some light and get some effects in our render so what we could do is we change indirect elimination the next thing we could do is we could go to environment and make sure your environment is put on and reflection reflection background is put on now uh, okay before that we can close this one off and we don't have any sun object in the scene so let's create a layer here first and call this a sun make it current and we'll put a sun object which is here and once you're inside this you have a couple of options you can either manually control the direction of this or you can go to automatic settings so you could select the region in the world the India here and the year fine and the day the time here you can give a date here and time here here as well not a problem fine so uh, with this for this exercise we would go with the manual control and we would want um, north to be let's say coming from this side so then we'll have to change this to Okay, you can go by this default here don't change it but you could change it here as well you could say you want 270 degrees or something and hit enter in order if you want to change not but if you leave it to 90 degrees generally it will face this side so if I go to the top view okay, I need to come out of this anyways you get the point if you go to the top view the top would be 90 degrees so anyways you could you could change it over here as well so this is your north which in this case if it was this way the sun would be pointing this way so let's assume we want sun to come from this angle and this is to decide how how much overhead do you want it like you want it like absolutely above your head like in the afternoon or so or you want it something like this so I will go with this hit enter and then it will ask you to position the sun now for this step you could actually really click anywhere on the scene doesn't matter so now no so now I entered that you know you got the ref you got the shadows and stuff happening so if I go to the top view <coughs> see the rendered view you can get to see the shadows here and you can also get to see the position of the Sun so I think so we'll go to shaded mode I'm just trying to locate where the sun is I think it's here okay somewhere inside so we can take it out not a problem can't quite see it I don't know why but here it is and if you want to let's say for example you think um, it's covering a lot of your geometry and stuff you need to tweak this around you could always it's already selected so select the object go to properties and the properties there's this light tab go to modify sun and let's say you want to reduce this sciography so you can come in here and you can tweak it around and it's a little less now I think this should be fine so let's just render and see what's going on nothing is happening yeah we have something happening now and I guess we have the environment already applied so I need to show you the steps how to put the environment so let me just 
come out of this you go to render go to options and the environment you have to make sure both these are on because if you don't have the environment this one will not work indirect illumination basically depends on the kind of environment you have so it will reflect the light on the environment it will bounce it around and that's why you get the get to see the kind of quality uh, a good quality in a render so you want to make sure this one is on and under m you need to select sun here and this one should be set to text sky so this is a procedural sky which rhino offers you or vray offers you so it will mimic a uh, real world scene or scenario and it will take this sun as the default sun for the environment you don't have to change anything else just say okay and under m again here you could select sun here again and text sky say okay you need to make sure this one is one if you really want to uh, want to uh, want the environment to take an effect okay so that's about environment sometimes uh, if i go to camera and if i put the exposure on and if i leave this to say 30 and something low and something high here and hit render you really get weird effects because you won't be able to see anything so if anything like this is going on then you should know you have to watch out this camera button because most of the exposures and the amount of light hitting on your surfaces and everything is controlled under here so you want to make sure for an exterior render uh, what is shutter speed basically under this you have to make sure for this one to be effect you need to put on the exposure on here and there are three controls here which are very important one is shutter speed one is f number and iso we can have another section to explain you the details of this but basically to explain you very briefly shutter speed is the speed at which shutter closes and opens so the the slower it is it will allow in more light inside so it will be more brighter and stuff and f number again is the same i mean the lower the number it would be more brighter there would be more light and stuff film iso again more or less they are the same but it works uh, it, they work differently because you really not need to know photography to really understand them and uh, it's outside of the scope of this exercise to really understand that so so basically this one the the smaller it is here it will allow in more light the larger it is uh, it will allow in less light iso is again it it controls the exposed amount of exposure so the higher it is it will be more exposed so there will be more light and the smaller this one there will be more light so higher it is that's changes too for the best exterior render i think this should be really this should be increased to as high as like 11 or 16 so i'll go with 16 anyways for the purpose of showing you what happens if i change this to this high so i had already showed you earlier anyways going back to this let's change this to as high as 16 so you change this to say 100 or 120 and you change this to say 75 or something let's just hit enter and see what happens thing is quite little dark and that's a good thing about free passing so you don't have to wait uh, until the entire render is completed you could just close this one now and that is controlled under irradiance map the show calculation phase very important so it's controlled under here if you don't have this one checked in then you wouldn't get to see all of that so we need to maybe increase the shutter speed a little bit say 75 and maybe increase this little bit say 80 and reduce this one to 11 and just hit enter again i think this is pretty good so you need to tweak around a little bit i mean there are there are no best settings for it you need to tweak it little bit here and there 
I think this one should be good. Okay, so we'll come out of this and so generally this one changes from the, the, the lower, it, for mostly for interiors this one is much lower. For an exterior this is a bit somewhere between 11 to 16 and this should be higher for the exteriors and this should be lower for the exteriors. So going back to environment we've covered, camera we've covered. In order for this one to be really effective make sure exposure is turned on here. And then we have the image sensor. Very important settings here, you don't have to change really anything. Go by the default, go by DMs is the best and you need to, for a best render you need to change this to as high as 002. DMC sampler again an important dialog box. Now this one basically controls the overall kind of quality of your render. So let's say um, there are a lot of noises, uh, you're get, getting, to, getting to see a lot of pixels and dust and stuff in your renders then if you increase this one the best setting for this is generally 002 you can go higher than that for very high quality 005 or something 001 is the lowest and 002 is like the average and uh, this one really controls the overall subdivisions for example uh, if you go to irradiance map and uh, under here you have this subdivisions here subdivisions as you know really controls the quality. The higher the subdivisions, the better would be the quality, but um, the render times would be very heavy. So if you increase this sub subdivisions here, if you go to other settings as well, even if you go to say anti-aliasing, not here. In the light, light cache, again, you have the subdivisions here. So if I change this one to three, then this would be 500 into three. This one would be 85 into 3 so it gets multiplied actually by that number so you need to know that DMC sampler and again under if you go to your materials if you go to your materials and glass for example if you go to reflection sorry go to metal reflection and if you remember we had changed the glossiness here we've changed the glossiness here right so and there are subdivisions here so if these are eight, you know, this gets again multiplied. So it affects subdivisions everywhere. So uh, in this case, you don't have to change for the best renders. You could change this to 32 here. This one should be 002 and this you could increase to three or something. Okay. But it really slows down, you know, you won't be able to, I mean, it takes very long time for render. So I'll go by default one, but three is the best. And coming to color mapping, uh, if you're not getting the right kind of light, you know, sunlight and stuff, then partly you're not getting it because linear workflow is on. So you might want to put it off, fine. And you need to put this one on. So if you're applying a lot of textures like this and they're kind of, you know, washed out or something, they're not really getting the kind of vibrance you require. You need to make sure correct LDR textures is on. And I will explain in a later session, a detailed session, what are all these things, right? So for the timing, we'll go by this, we'll remove the linear workflow, and we'll close this one off. And these are very good settings. Reinhardt is the best setting for color mapping. Under the output channel, again, there are the sizes. What sizes do you want to render your output to? So if you want 4K or something, you could increase the resolutions. So 4k resolution is not here but you could just type in here 4000 by whatever and you'll get it so these are your standard numbers actually <coughs> because the lock is on it is not affecting if I remove this remove the lock then we'll get the same size but let's let's assume um, we want to take the size of a viewport what you see here then you could just say give, get view aspect and you'll get it so this one has changed because the proportions are different and you can change this to as low as 800 and then say get view aspect and then you could lock it and you could just change this to whatever you want. So 1000 
this one will change something like this. But this will again increase the render time, so I'll keep it to slightly lower. So that's about output. We've covered this, we've covered that one. Indirect illumination again coming back. You, you want to make sure ambient occlusion is on. It works fine. We'll again cover later what is ambient occlusion and all that. And then I think we are good to go. I mean, we've covered the best settings that are required. And you could even go by this. So once you've done all the settings, you may want to save the settings. So say we shall final. Because if you change it to something else, let's say if you change it to exterior and something else and the heat render, all of the settings that you have done will change. So then how to quickly revert back to those settings or just to load the settings, I could just select on this and it will load the settings. Okay. Um, so, so that's about it and if I just hit render now, I think it's quite good. Okay, so I was earlier trying to explain you about this infinite plane, very infinite plane. It appears to be very small, so when you render it, it will extend up to the horizon. And you get to see this sky here, because in the environment we have used this um, text sky bitmap. That's how you get to see this color here. And the color of this, actually it's affecting the overall illumination because it's contributing to the global illumination and all that. So. This is quite nice, this render is quite nice, except that uh, we have not applied the right scales for all, all of this, so you could spend some more time tweaking this around. And uh, what you really need to know is if you're not getting the right results, then you need to work in the camera settings, you need to change these around. Um, you need to make sure this one is one and this one is checked on in the first place because if this one is not on then indirect illumination will not give you the right kind of results so these are basically reflections this is basically if you have glass and other things and you have a background so here you could change this background is basically the background here so in which case you have seen the sky you could change it to anything else you could put an HDRI here like for example if I go here and put a HDRI So there are some couple of SGRIs here which I have given you. So, or it could be any image that you've taken on the site, and you could just put it around here, and say okay. So when you when you say okay there, then it would kind of you know come around here. If you want me to show you that very quickly, let me just use the same SGRI. And you need to change this one here to environment and you need to change this to cylindrical. Say preview and say OK. And if you hit render, it should show you over there. So before hitting render, let me just see if anything else requires to be changed. We've changed the output, we've changed this. Color mapping, make sure if you're not getting the right kind of illumination or it's dark or something, then you need to make sure linear workflow is put off and putting correct LDR textures will make the textures come to life. It will be more vibrant, otherwise it will be washed out quite a bit. And DMC sampler, we've covered. I think those are the best settings we have. You may need to dial this up to as much as 1500 or 2000 even. So this really controls the number of bounces of light. So the higher it is, the best quality renders you would get, but it would slow down considerably. So if it's a, a test render, you could just reduce this. If it's a final render, please tweak this on the higher end. 
I think that's about it and we'll just take one final render and we are good to go. So HDR hasn't really taken effect here. Anyways, we would cover HDRIs in more detail in, uh, in the upcoming sections. So for the time being, you could just revert back in your environment, you could change it to text sky. Okay, I think that's about it. So these are the real quick settings you can do in V-Ray Rhino just to get the best results. And besides that, you have ready presets here. Thank you for watching this video.